Hello, this is John Sims with the Vive Serviceability Engineering Team. This video will cover IP Office Network Address Port Translation, or NAP, for SSL VPN. Before we get started with the demonstration, first a few notables about the IP Office 8.1 Feature Pack 1 NAT solution for SSL VPN. It's currently only supported on the IP Office 500 v2 platform using the IP Office standard edition of the manager client. The limitations you see are it's not supported on IP Office server edition, basic edition, or on the IP Office v1 or earlier platforms. There's no web manager support. But keep in mind that NAT support for IP Office server edition is coming soon. So why do we use network address port translation in the first place? Well, by default, the IP Office SSL VPN allows access only to the IP 500 v2 control unit. NAT will allow you, when configured, to access LAN devices located on the private side of the IP 500 v2 network. And keep in mind, partners and customers, please consult the Avaya IP Office SSL VPN Solutions Guide found on support.avaya.com if you wish to deploy an Avaya VPN gateway solution to remotely access IP Office systems. So let's get started configuring NAT for the SSL VPN service. You see I'm going to open a configuration and that's done through the standard way using manager to pull a configuration from the switch logging in with the proper credentials and when the manager client validates and pulls in the configuration I'm going to head to the service in the tree and you see we have an Avaya support SSL VPN service created and there there's a NAT tab that's been added for 8.1 feature pack 1. From here you see I can add rules that are built in voicemail pro, 1x portal, we'll add a combination of rules here for this video purpose so I'll add voicemail pro and I'll point to a, an address on the private side of the network that hosts the voice, Voicemail Pro server and you'll see that the ports are predefined as 5791 which is the Voicemail Pro client port needed to access the Voicemail Pro server. So the inbound tunnel request will request 5791 and then the NAT rule will send it over to the Voicemail Pro server on the same port number. Same with 1x portal. I can then point into a 1x portal server on the network and the 8080 port request will then get sent to the IP address of 1.46 also on port 8080. It should be noted you can make changes to these rules. So you can come in on a customized port instead of 22, let's say 222 and then have it be the destination of port 22 on 1.47 for SSH. And remote desktop is another option that's pre-configured and built in as a NAT rule. So I'm giving it an address on the network that we want to then listen for the port 3389 request and send to that IP address on the internal side of the network. And last but not least we have web control as an option which is 7070 to go to the web control manager for things like the UCM module or for server edition. So again in this case we'll give it the proper IP address that was configured in this case for a UCM module perhaps and again the internal port number of 7070 and we'll click OK and we'll save up that request. And you see here our save configuration results in a merge event and not a reboot event so we can make NAT changes and not be customer impacting. One thing I want to quickly point out is how to delete a NAT rule. That upper X is for the whole Avaya support VPN service so you won't make use of that. Instead you'll click into a NAT rule and then right click delete. So that is you see me now deleting all the individual NAT rules. We're going to leave the RDP rule because we're going to test with that now for the next segment. So now it's time to make use of the custom rule. Let's say we have to RDP to yet another server behind in the customer network. We'll add the custom rule choice using TCP and then we'll tick up 3389 as a listening port up to 33891. So that way in your remote desktop client you'll put in your IP address of your target plus colon 33891 
and then what will happen here is we're setting it to then be directed to this internal server on the traditional listening port of 3389. That's a good use of making use of a custom role in case we had to remote desktop to two different servers inside the customer network. So let's go over this concept just one more time. Let's add an SSH rule into an internal server on 1.133 address also on port 22. So let's say we have to shell into, have the ability to SSH into yet another server inside the customer network. We can't make use of 22 because that already has a NAT rule associated with it. So we'll add 221 into a different server, but again, its listing port is 22. Again, that's a good use of the custom rule allowing us to reach multiple servers inside of the same listening port we change the external port number to give us greater flexibility to reach those inside servers so you see I'm in SSA all the way down in IP networking looking at the support tunnel and I'm in fallback mode so I have no tunnel IP address and soon we'll set that in service to collect tracing but before we do let's go into system monitor go to filters trace options and under the VPN tab, we're going to want to select under SSO VPN section, configuration, session, and session state. And then we have another addition here. If we do click on development tracing, which is dangerous to do, usually without the guidance of tier 3 or higher support. But in this case, you can use development tracing to see an additional NAT monitor in system monitor. So we'll go ahead and click that and then select OK for the purpose of this demonstration. So now you're going to see me set the tunnel back in service on the bottom of the SSA page and you see how we have been assigned a tunnel IP address. So it's time to check back in with System Monitor and you'll see we have some, and I'll pause the tracing, you'll see we have some good information now traced which is the addition, number one, that we have a connected tunnel and then the addition of a NAT translator. So then if I go to status, NAT status, you'll see where we can then harvest out even more information on current session state with our NAT sessions over the SSL VPN tunnel. So you see at the top of the monitor we have a LAN2 session state count of one instance and one session displayed. So I'll click on it and you'll see we have the remote port of 3389. So that's our remote desktop session that I'm currently running through the tunnel and it'll give you just information on how what the outbound IP address and the outbound port and the type of of connection is dynamic so if you ever need to troubleshoot NAT and SSL VPN you definitely have a couple of tools here in system monitor tracing and the NAT status window that's been now added to system monitor for 8.1 feature pack 1 and this completes our demonstration Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.